Hey everyone and welcome again. So in this video we will be adding the core game loop to the project that we have at the moment. So we're going to add a win and a lose state so that it's going to start making a little bit more sense why we're keeping score of things and this will allow us to start swapping between levels as well. So to get started with this one we're going to go back to our blueprints folder and the first thing I think we want is going to be our goal for the end of our maps. So if we create a new blueprint class we're going to make this of the type actor again. So we're going to create just a standard actor blueprint and sticking with standard naming conventions we'll just call this one the endpoint. So again we have bp underscore endpoint. If we open this there's just a few things we want to change in this and really what I want to create this one based around is going to be a collider. So if we add a component we actually have a perfect thing for this which is a box collider. So we have our box collision and I'm just going to drag and select this on top of the default scene route so that the default component in this blueprint will be the, the box collider that we just made. And that is really everything we need it to do. We're just going to come down here though with the box selected and this is going to reinforce something that I mentioned in previous videos and that's the difference in how we set the collisions up. So I just want to change the custom preset here on the collision from overlap all dynamic to overlap all just to make sure that every catch is made for the player to go through this. So do remember though that we're setting this to overlap and not block. So this is what I meant with like a a checkpoint that we want the player to be able to go through this and have that recognized but we don't want this to act as a wall and make the player bounce off of it. So with those changes made I'm going to save everything and close that one and I'm just going to find the end of this course. So the end of the course is I'd say we'll give it a fair point just after that block and with that done we've dragged in what we can see is our cube and this is a little bit hard to select because it's transparent so you may need to come over here and select the end point and what I want to do is inside of this drop down over here once you've selected the end point you want to actually select the box as well and I'm just going to change the box extent on this to be a bit bigger on the y-axis so just drag this out just to make sure that it covers a fair amount of the, the level but if the player's fallen off, I don't want to give them too much leeway. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit more. So they need to kind of be mostly on the track to hit this at the end of the stage. And like we've seen before, I'm going to go back and make sure that we're selecting this part of the end, the end point now, not the box collider. Uh, make sure that you've got your snapping down, drag this up a bit and then hit end just to make sure this is sat flush with the floor. So now as long as the player's pretty much on level and within a, a decent amount of the bounds, when they go through this, the player's definitely going to hit the checkpoint and we're going to start adding our logic to say what happens when the game ends or when the uh, the level's been completed. So to do this, we're going to open up our BP underscore player again and we're going to go down here. So at the moment we have our on component hit. Now we're going to do something very, very similar, but this isn't actually going to work for what we want to do now. So we're going to get our player cube again. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go back to the events section that we've seen before. And this time where previously we used a hit, which is our blocking check, we're now going to use our on component to begin overlap. So we can drag this out to see that that says overlap there. So if we hit that plus button, that's going to give us another event. And this will only be triggered when we go through something rather than when we collide with it or hit it. And what we want to do here, similar to what we've done last time, is we're going to cast to the thing we want to check against, which is our endpoint. So if you search for endpoint, this has got a context sensitive check. So it's actually quite clever. It knows that the only thing that we can possibly be wanting to do based on the fact we're pulling off of another actor is to cast against it. So we'll just choose that and it will also connect that for us. Just tidy that a bit. And then if that's correct, then what we want to do is on the success, I'll just do another print string for now and we'll just say one. So we know that when we go through this, it's gonna print one. So if we just test that out, we'll go back over. We will go in and press play and I'm gonna try and make sure I don't hit these. And there we go. So we have in the top left hand corner there you may have just made out that it did say one which means that we've got to this stage it hasn't blocked us we've not bounced off of it but we have indeed gone through and checked the endpoint. so that would be the level over now we've pretty much got the the lose state as well so if we hit any of these we get our hit end game that stops us moving the score stays where it was so all of this is working pretty well which really means what we want to start doing now is taking some of this logic over into our game mode, remember, which is why I said it kind of acts like a game manager that you find in a lot of other scripting languages or other game engines. And our game mode is where the fundamental game logic is going to be held. So that's going to be the area that needs to know that the current session is either been won or lost and updating the score and things like that. So before we do that, I'm just going to remove the print string here and I'm going to update the local boolean in this blueprint to say that the game has ended remember we have our b game ended boolean so i just want to check that that has been enabled 
And what this will do is that when we've gone through our checkpoint, it's really just to stop us moving and doing anything silly like then losing or hitting something afterwards. So that's going to bring our game to an actual stop, which is going to be faded out anyway. So it's kind of a background thought, but um, that system's there. So I'm just going to use that because it's available. And remember, all that was doing is uh, we're checking up here whether or not we should move left or right or forward based on whether or not the game has ended. OK, so with that done, I'm going to go back over to our BP underscore game mode. We'll open this one up. And if you're seeing this kind of simplified version of the blueprint, all we need to do is hit the open full blueprint editor and this will open it up as we've seen it before. And we want two new functions inside of this. So I'll create one function which is called end game and one function called level complete. So depending on what happens in the player, whether the player hits a obstacle or the end point, one of these functions will be called. And just for demonstration purposes, really, this is going to be a little bit choppy and we will definitely clean this up when we add some more of the menus and the new widgets that we'll be creating later. But if level complete gets called, what I want to do is demonstrate how we can open the second level that we have ready. So we will just call the open level function, another nice handy built in function to the Unreal Engine. And by name, we need to call main two. This is context sensitive, so we do need to make sure that all of the um, uppercases and everything are as we've spelt them previously. So I know that I've got my maps called main two, no underscores or anything. And in the end game, again, this is going to be updated when we get a bit further into this and add a few more things. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just going to use the open level function again, and I'm just going to recall main one. So this is a really dirty, hacky way of getting things just working to some extent at the moment, because again, we still don't have all of the assets that we need to flesh this out but I also don't want to jump too far ahead too quickly. So if we press play now, if we purposely hit one of these, what should happen is we're going to hit this and we haven't actually linked any of these up. I make this mistake so, so often. So we're going to go back now. And so when we've hit an obstacle, we want to actually call these functions inside of the game mode. So as we've seen previously, we want a reference to the game mode to be able to call a function within that, similar to what we've done in the blueprint widget. So in a very similar vein, the way we do this is we get our BP underscore game mode. Again, with the context sensitivity enabled, if you just type in BP underscore game mode, you'll get the option to cast to this. To find out what game mode is currently selected, we can just type the get game mode. And in a similar way to the, how the uh, this is the widget was just checking the current pawn, this will check the current game mode. And what this is doing is it is casting to make sure that the current game mode is of type BP underscore game mode. And we know that that's going to be true because in our maps and modes we've set that just here so basically when you call that that's all that is checking against is this value to, is uh, definitely of the right type so if that's the right type then we can promote this to a variable like we've done previously i always tend to give these the same name as the type of blueprint it is so bp underscore game mode and there once again we've just cast just once at the beginning of the game and stored that value ready for use later which means we can come back down here we can control drag in our bp game mode reference and we can now start calling functions from this so the first one we want is our ended so we'll just type end and we can see we've got the function option here end game so this is now going to go inside of the current game mode and when the player hits an obstacle it's going to call that function if we double click that takes us over to the game mode and it will call this open level one now, very similarly, I'm just going to control W the reference to the game mode. And just here, I'm going to call the level complete function instead. OK, so we have our level complete function. So now if we hit compile and this time we play it, what we should see is that if we hit one of these cubes or the obstacles, we're just instantly reloading that level and starting again. Whereas if we hit the endpoint, then we've actually just been loaded into level two. Uh, level 2 doesn't have an endpoint, so we're just going to carry on going on forever. Now, the final thing to really make sure that we have everything being checked against is we can still fall off of the edge. So we're going to do a check for this as well. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to do a really simple call to check the current value of the player's location at all times. First of all, I will do a get player location check. And I said player then, it's uh, actually get actor location. So we'll get the location of this current actor. We're going to right click here and we'll split the structure pin and we just want to make sure that the z axis so up and down isn't less than a certain value so we'll do less than and if we just come back in and look at this we know that we've put the floor on the z axis of 20 the player will probably be a, a tiny bit higher than that and we don't want this to be too sharp of an exit so playing about with values i think something like minus five should be perfectly fine uh, with that done, we want to drag off of the add impulse. So whilst we're moving, we want to keep checking this and we'll do a branch check and we'll just make sure that the act location 
is less than five. And if it is, then we know that we have fallen off the side and we've gone too far down. So we want to call our game ended function. And I just realized I made a small slip up here. So this is calling the local version of game ended. So that's this function inside of the player blueprint. What we really want to do is where we have this print string, we want to replace that with our call just here to end game on the game mode. So because this has actually already been called once here, it means that we can do all of this just inside of one function. So if we replace that, we'll get rid of the print string. We'll copy in our end game that was on the end of our on component hit. So now both of these can call the local function, whether we've hit an object or fallen off the side, they can call the local function in the player blueprint. And then that's going to be in control and have the authority to then call up to the game mode and just update the game mode as well to let it know that we've we've lost somehow. So it's not going to make any change here. We can see that's working the same way. But now if we fall off, maybe minus five is even a little bit too high. Uh, you can see that seems a bit sharp. It, it's obvious that you've fallen off, but um, I was hoping to let the player fall a little bit further. So maybe make this minus 15 and uh, pressing the movement a little bit too soon there. But you can play about these values again. That may, have, may still be a little bit too high. Minus 30, minus 30 might look a little bit better to, to give you that little bit of time so that you can start falling. That looks a bit better. So there we go. So we now have a loose statement for whether you go out of the arena or into an obstacle. And we have our win state in main one. So we're just going to go over to main map two as well, actually. And we may as well do the same thing there. So I'm going to get our blueprint, our endpoint blueprint, drag that somewhere at the end. Uh, where they've had a decent amount of time to go past the endpoint. We'll hit end to uh, drop that down, go to the box extent, and we'll just make this a little bit bigger on the y-axis. Also giving them a little bit of leeway. If the player's just falling out a little bit of the uh, the arena, they can still just catch this one. Now at the moment, this isn't going to be ideal either because this is just going to reload main map two. Uh, but again, that is all accounted for, and we will be fixing that in later videos. However, I will be leaving this video here for today. And I just felt I need to say apologies for my, my voice in the last few videos. I seem to have gotten a cold, and I'm trying to get as many of these out as quickly as possible. So I'm trying to record them all in one go, which is why I can't wait for the cold to go away, unfortunately. But I'm going to leave the video here for today. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content from the channel and future videos in this playlist. As ever though, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.